Hey guys, Adam here with ExtremeTerrain.com and today we're taking a closer look at and installing the s &B cold air intake with the oiled cleanable drop-in filter available for the 07 and newer 57 Tundra. You should be checking this out if you're looking to ditch the factory more restrictive air box in favor for one that's going to help your engine breathe a lot better, give you a small bump in horsepower and torque along with some better throttle response and acceleration as well as a better engine sound as well. Now really the star player of the kit is the oiled cleanable filter. Now this one's oiled meaning it does require a little bit more maintenance when it comes time for routine maintenance, but either way, it's a great option over the factory dry paper element filter that we'll take a closer look at comparing them side by side later on in the video. This one here is cleanable so you can wash it, re-oil it, and throw it right back in instead of having to pick up a new one, and it can last up to 100,000 miles. This is going to help filter out all of those micro particles you don't want making its way into your intake and ultimately your engine, and it's going to also bring in a lot more cold air as that oiled cotton gauze element is going to be a little bit more open than a paper element filter. It's got a completely closed air box with a plexiglass clear lid so you can easily see the condition of the filter so you know when it's time for maintenance when it comes time to cleaning it off and oiling it. On the side here you have the optional plug to plug up this open hole. Now if you're looking for maximum airflow coming in, if it's a really nice day out and you're looking to keep all that cold air coming through, leave that guy open. If you're in a location that sees really high hot summer temperatures, you might want to plug it up so you can reduce some of the heat soak there. So it gives you the option. Either way it's going to utilize that factory air duct coming in the side here of the passenger fender. Now this one uses a textured black plastic. It's more of a high intensity roto molded plastic, really great for heat dissipation. Same material there for the air box as well. And it's got a nice weather stripping around that lid to make sure it's trapping in the cold air and blocking out the excess engine bay heat. Price tag for this comes in right around 400 bucks. Install one out of three wrenches on our difficulty meter. Anybody can tackle it with about an hour's worth of time from start to finish. I'll walk you through it. Let's get started. Tools used in the install include an impact gun, a large extension, eight and 10 millimeter deep sockets, Phillips head screwdriver, a pair of snips, and a pair of pliers. Step number one, guys, of course, pop your hood. We're going to pop our engine cover off. Just lift straight up and set it aside. Next step, let's disconnect our factory sensor here. You're just going to pinch and disconnect that factory harness. Now, as you can see, there is a retainer clip here, so we're going to pop that guy off. If you need to, you can grab a panel tool, so let's do that. All right, with a panel removal tool, we'll be able to easily pop that guy off. Next, let's disconnect our two hoses here. We have one with a hose clamp and one smaller one. Now what you wanna do for these hoses is pinch this hose clamp and we're gonna shuffle it back and off of that fitting and then pull the hose straight back. For this little guy, we're just gonna pull straight off, just like that. Next, let's loosen up the clamp on our throttle body, connecting it to the tubing. Grab a 10 socket and loosen that guy up. Next, we have two 10 millimeter bolts holding on our factory heat shield to the engine bay, we have 110 right down here, and then on the opposite corner of the intake, which you can't see from here, we'll get that off in a second. Let's start here with this one. I'm gonna use a longer uh, extension on my impact and get the 10 off. All right, now you don't have to pull it all the way off because obviously, obviously you can see it has this retainer washer. You just wanna make sure it's loose and then repeat that for the other one on the other corner. Opposite corner, same thing. Next, you're just going to pop the entire factory intake off, starting at the throttle body, and feed that guy out. So we got our factory intake off of our 18 Tundra behind me, and it's on the table next to our s and cold air intake with the oiled cotton cleanable filter. Let's go through some similarities and differences here, and I'm going to start up front. Let's start with that filter. Now, I took apart our factory air box to expose the factory dry drop-in paper element filter and compare that directly with the s and oiled filter. Now, as you can see, completely different styles, completely different colors, and overall, it's going to have a different function. The factory filter is pretty good from the factory getting off the line. It does a pretty decent job filtering out all the particles you don't want making its way into the engine, but it's not optimized for cold air. This new upgrade from SNB, who's been making filters for generations now, this guy here is really going to optimize the airflow. As a matter of fact, they let us know that it increases airflow over the factory intake and the filter specifically over 51%. That is a huge, huge noticeable increase in airflow. And that's gonna be thanks to that cotton cleanable gauze material. Now that cotton gauze is gonna be more of an open filter element than the paper element, which you have from the factory, which is much more closed off. Again, closed off, great for filtering out, not great for optimizing airflow. So getting that opened cotton gauze filter there is huge when it comes to pulling in more volume. 
Now, the nice thing about the cotton gauze here, along with the oiled filter on top of that, is that it still maintains superior filtration capabilities. Just because it's open doesn't mean it's letting in those microparticles. It's actually going to block out more than the factory paper element, as a matter of fact. Now, aside from that, you can see it's a cylindrical or conical shape. It's 360 degree. You get a lot more volume that way. And it's still going to be reusing that opening in the fender that you get on the passenger side, where you see the factory intake taking advantage of. You still get that here as well. So you're still going to be maintaining that factory functionality. Aside from that, guys, oiled versus dry is something to keep in mind. Now, the dry paper element is not really something you'll see in the aftermarket. It's usually a dry cotton gauze element or something of that nature, or a synthetic material. So if you're looking at oiled versus dry, just keep in mind that they are within 1% of each other in terms of performance, extremely close, almost completely the same when it comes to performance. It's just a matter of application. The oiled filter does require a little bit more maintenance, so when it comes time for routine maintenance, you can pop this out, wash it, re-oil it, throw it right back in. It's good for up to 100,000 miles of continuous use. That's something that is extremely dependable. Dry filters, on the other hand, are seeing a very similar characteristic. The only difference is you don't have to re-oil it. Now keep in mind, guys, if you're located in a dry climate area, seeing a lot of air pollution, say a desert climate, such as maybe Arizona, for example, in the States, a dry filter might be the way to go because it won't get clogged up as much as an oiled filter would. The oil is going to attract some of those microparticles, so if you're seeing a lot more air pollution, you'll just have to do maintenance a little bit more often than not. But either way, performance is still going to be the same nonetheless. Now it's obviously got a much larger tubing than factory, a bigger inlet, but it's not going to require a tune even though you're pulling in more of that volume. This is an ABS textured black plastic, very similar to the factory material. It's great for heat dissipation, and obviously it's got the opening there for your factory sensor, which we'll be transferring over. The air box here, significantly different than the factory one. It's a lot bigger to accommodate the much larger air filter. This one has a unique thing that I want to mention here. It's got two openings, one on each side, and it's got the top lid. Now the top lid allows you to see into the factory filter and it's gonna have a plexiglass cover over top of it so it's really trapping in that cold air, but you can also just pop it off easily to gain access to the filter to clean it when it comes time for maintenance. On the side here, however, you have two options. One, keep it wide open like this to really optimize the air coming through, or you can use a silicone plug and it plugs that right up. Now, this is a great way to block out some of that excess engine bay heat, but if you're looking to optimize that airflow, good thing to take off. That's something to keep in mind if you're looking to get a custom tune as well. Those removable options are gonna allow for either more air coming through or not, so it's something to keep in mind. We're gonna keep ours off for this, but if you want to install it, it literally just pops right into this cutout and can block some of that off. So if it's an extremely, extremely hot day out, you might wanna plug it up so you can reduce some of that heat soak. If it's a really cool breeze outside or if you're looking at lower temperatures, depending on your climate change, you can obviously pop it out or pop it back in respectively. Now we're gonna start assembling a couple of things on the table here today. We're gonna to start with the intake sensor. Let's start there and then we'll continue with assembly. All right, next up we wanna transfer over our factory sensor, grab a Phillips head screwdriver and get those two small screws off. All right, next up we have a couple of things we need to put on that factory sensor. First, going to take this plastic adapter. Now keep in mind, it really only goes on one way to line up with these two holes. So if it doesn't line up the first time, you might have to rotate it or flip it. From there, grab the gasket and do the same thing. You want to make sure the gasket is underneath the plastic piece. All right, so it looks like I have to rotate the gasket. Let's go this way. Perfect. All right, now we can drop on. Now there are some longer bolts included in the kit, these Phillips head screws rather. Put those guys through. I'm gonna thread them both on by hand, get them started, and then tighten them down with your screwdriver. All right, I'm gonna make sure they're nice and tight on both sides to really compress that gasket for a seal. Next up, we're gonna plug this hole with this rubber gasket. I'm gonna put that guy through there. Make sure it's seated all the way. And then you wanna take the hose tubing or hose fitting and put it right through that gasket. You wanna make sure the gasket does not collapse into the tubing, so you might wanna put your hands on the inside to hold it there. It'll snap right into place. All right, keeping with the tubing here, grab your silicone coupler. Make sure you have one of the larger clamps included on the inside. Seat that guy over the tubing, just like this. All right, once you have that fully seated, grab your eight socket or your flathead screwdriver and tighten down the clamps. 
right? And then the smaller clamp will go over the side. Underneath or on the bottom of our air box here, we're gonna install these grommets. There are two of them. One's gonna go here and one's gonna go here. There's a different one for the opposite corner. So let's stick with these guys. They're just gonna hug this ring, this pre-drilled ring. You just wanna work all the way around to make sure it seats properly. All right, same thing on the other one. Next up, let's put our grommet on the open hole going on the side here. That one just pops right on. Obviously, it's a very specific shape, so you want to make sure you're orienting it perfectly, and it'll snap on. Next, we're going to put our weather stripping or grommet on the opposite side, and that's just going to hug this hole like some of the other grommets as well. Next up, you want to take the hose included in the kit, and we're going to insert the white fitting right in there. Make sure the teeth grab. All right, so that's going to hold itself on. This is going to go to the factory tubing. The other side will go to our new tubing, and we'll connect this with a hose clamp later. First step, let's grab that rubber spacer. We're going to put it right over the bolt that's lowest toward the front grill. Now we can drop on our air box. All right, when you drop the air box on, just be careful not to knock off that spacer. All right, now we can bolt it down. Next, each of the three places you put a grommet, you wanna drop on a 10 millimeter bolt. All right, grab your 10 socket and tighten them down. All right, next up, you have one more right in the middle and one at this corner all the way at the bottom where we put that rubber spacer. So you just wanna get those in, tighten them down, and we'll move on. All right, for the tubing, I'm actually gonna put it right inside the air box, just like this. Feed that guy down inside. Can be a little bit tricky at first, you just wanna make sure you're rotating it so you get it in the proper position. Drop her in, like that. Swing it out through this way, and connect it to your throttle body. Once you have it seated on the throttle body, tighten down that clamp. Grab your eight socket or flathead and tighten it down. All right, next up, let's drop our filter top down first. You wanna swing it over to connect to the tubing we just installed. All right, once you have it there, bring your clamp into position and tighten it down with your eight socket. Now, before we put our lid on, you wanna make sure you're putting the weather stripping through the channel. And that just inserts really simply and just work your way around. All right, looks like we have a little bit of excess. And you could go back and compress it if you'd like, or you can just snip off that excess. All right, next we can drop on that plexiglass lid. Only goes on one way. Line up those bolt holes. You wanna take your Phillips head screws, make sure they're inserted into the black spacers, and then put them through. All right, I'm just gonna thread them on a couple of threads, then we'll come back and tighten them down once everything is lined up. All right, now that we know everything's lined up, we can just go back and tighten them down with our Phillips head screwdriver. All right, next up what we can do is take the new hose that we assembled on our table. We're gonna insert the 
white fitting into the factory hose. Grab a pair of pliers and move the factory clamp over that. This other end is gonna get the new hose clamp. I'm gonna flip around the other way. And put that onto our fitting here. And I'll tighten that down in just a second. What we wanna do is grab the small hose and put that over the smaller fitting. Make sure that's seated all the way down. Just like that, that won't need a clamp. We can grab our factory sensor harness and plug that in, just like that. Now we can tighten on this clamp. Grab your eight socket and tighten down that hose clamp. All right, last step here, let's put our engine cover back on. All right, from here, you're good to go. That's gonna wrap up my review and install for the SNB cold air intake with the cleanable oiled filter available for the 07 and newer 57 Tundra. Get yours right here at extremeterrain.com.